Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Abdul Adamu from Data Analytica. In this part, we are going to look at common stock valuation. In first part, we looked at what is stock, we looked at the type of stock, we looked at the classes of stock, how stocks are classified. We also looked at features of preference stocks or preferred stock, and we looked at the advantages of preferred stock. So we then talked about the disadvantages, but briefly, the preferred stock um, has the following disadvantages. One, they, has no, they have no voting rights, and uh, any rise in the interest rate will dwindle the fixed dividend because the dividends are not flexible. And also, there is heavy an accumulation of dividend, and there is high cost of debt than high cost than debt for issuing companies and also is a way to liquidation. This means that when the company do not make enough profit, the preferred stockholder will insist on their dividend. And finally, no income tax exemption. So those are the disadvantages which I skipped in our first lecture. So in this lecture we are going to look at stock valuation specifically common stock valuation so but before then let's look at uh, uh, the issue of a uh, nominal value intrinsic value and market value because when we talk about stock valuation we are looking at value that we assign to stock so for first nominal value nominal value are value that are assigned to stock when they are issued they are also called face or power value and they are the redeem redemption price so over the life of the company, the nominal value normally remain the same. Now we talked about market value. The market value is the price that the stock sells in the market. That is the current value of the stock in the market that the stock is being sold in the secondary market. For the nominal value, this is when the company issued the stock to the general public by way of public offering but market value is the price the stock is sold on the stock exchange then finally the intrinsic value the intrinsic value are those value perceived to be fair by the investor so those that want to invest has a value that they attach to the stock on their own so that value that they perceive to be fair may not be fair to all so and it is determined when an investor buy or sell stock so the stock valuation we are going to do here does not concern nominal value or the market value rather it concerns how an investor determine the intrinsic value of shares before they invest in so so stock valuation is normally used to determine the intrinsic value or the theoretical value of a stock. This is because the intrinsic value of a stock is not attached to the current price. And we say the current price is the market price. It helps to determine whether a stock is under value or over value at its current market price. So when you determine the current the intrinsic value. If the intrinsic value is below the market value, it means the stock is overvalued. If it is above the market value, then it means the stock is undervalued. So the investor can buy and hold it, uh, expecting the value to rise before they sell. Let's look at the types of stock valuation. Basically, we have two types of stock valuation. The first is the absolute stock valuation. The absolute stock valuation uses the company's fundamental 
information. Fundamental information that are provided in the company books are what we use to do the absolute stock valuation. The examples are the dividend discount model and the discounted cash flow model. We are going to look at this model in details starting from this lecture uh, till we finish. Then the second types of uh, stock valuation is the relative stock valuation. And the relative means it relates the investment with investment in other similar companies. So it compares investment with similar companies. An example is the comparative company analysis. So these are the two types of stock valuation. So we are going to start with the absolute stock valuation. We will look at the di discounted dividend model. Dividend discount model has different types of model. We are going to start with the one period dividend discount model. The discounted dividend model has to do with finding the present value of all future dividends. All future dividends that you earn from the stock. So you discount them back to present. It applies to company that distribute stable and regular dividends and the intrinsic value of a common stock using this discount, discounted dividend model depends on two elements. The two elements are one, the dividends that are paid each year and secondly the price that we are going to sell the stock when you are going to part with it. So and that price will include the initial price you buy the share plus or minus the capital gain or capital loss. The intrinsic value is the present value of all the future cash flow generated by it. So the future cash flow of the dividend, the present value of the dividends and the present value of the price when you are going to sell the stock. So it depends on three factors which are the future dividends, the dividend growth and the cost of equity. The cost of equity is the same thing as the required rate of return expected by the investor. It is cost to the firm. This we are going to also look in our subsequent lecture on cost of capital. Let's start with the first uh, discounted dividend model which is the single period discounted dividend uh, model. This is used to find the intrinsic price of a stock that is held for a single period only. It is less frequently used since investments are made for more than a year. The, the model is as follows. First, we discount the dividend for one period also the price at which the stock will be sold at the end of the one year will also be discounted so since the denominator are the same that is why we bring it down and add the numerator so this is for uh, addition of like fraction p o here is the current fair value of it, the stock the p1 here is the fair value of the stock at the end of the year the D1 here is the dividend at the end of the year. Then here, the cost, this is the cost of equity or the required rate of return on the equity. So let's take an example and see. The example, Vitaform Nigeria PLC announced a dividend of 1 Naira 50 Kobo on 30th December 2021, which is expected to grow by 5% next year. If the price will be 23 naira 75 kobo next year and the cost of equity is 15%, what will be the value at the end of the year? From the question, our DO is equals to 1 naira 50 kobo. Our P1 is 23.75. So our D1 is equals to 
you see it will grow by 5%, so 1.05, that is 1 plus the 5%, so this gives us 1.575. Then our cost of equity is 15%, 0.15. So if you take the formula, PO is equals to D1 plus P1 all over 1 plus KE. So if we input the value, our D1 is 1.575 plus P1 23.5. equal to 25.325 divided by 1.15 the final answer is 22 naira 2 kobo so this is the price of the share if you enjoyed this lecture kindly subscribe to our youtube channel you can like share and comment on the content to help us improve on it if you want to support the channel you can buy me coffee by clicking on the buy me coffee link below the video thank you